So I've attached the new lug to this and I've crimped it with the heavy duty crimper. I put some uh, heat shrink over it, yellow and green, to identify it. So now I'll solder the, uh, the shrunk. So uh, this is the earth lug, it's been crimped and soldered. I'll just um, re-record this one because I'm not sure if it recorded. That's it there, and it's considerably better than the um, original one. Is to be understood. The brown wire goes to the top of the switch. Well, I'm going to mark the back of the box where the switch goes. Okay. For PR for brown. See that? There you go, there. And the, bottom, the next one down is blue, which is your neutral. So we'll take that off now. So let's see, the main is removed. The other two wires go to the motor and they go to the pole of the forward reverse switch, which would make sense. The brown goes this way towards the pilot, um, towards the fuse holder, and the blue or the neutral goes towards the, uh, the big on off switch. So I'll mark this one as blue and this one as brown. So there's the power box. It's now disconnect removed from the lathe. Put that away. There was a, uh, a rubber bush here on the uh, the main threaded rod here. The uh, large shaft, that uh, rubber bush, I've taken it off and I'll put that in hole 8 as well with the uh, screws and there's a plastic cover um, over the top of that um, shaft I'm now going to remove the plastic cover there's two screws, three black screws you need to pull this off so you can get access to the bolts underneath here which hold the headstock on. That's the uh, plastic cover. Bit of a clean. I sprayed a little bit of degreaser in there before. Go in number eight as well, as in the two screws that hold it. We now have to remove the cover over the back of the motor. So we'll take that off. We'll screws there and they will go into hole 9 screws here there's only two and we can now pull the, um, the power lead out there's the power lead coming out that will go Behind hole nine, pin uh, nine there. Okay. So you have to take the motor out to get to the screw that holds the casing. This, the motor won't allow you to put any any uh, spanner in there. Makes it hard. If it had been cleared, you probably wouldn't have to take any of this stuff off. The next uh, instruction is to remove this shaft. Up a bit that. And the reason for that is because you need to get to the screws that hold the motor in place, which are down here. 
if you don't uh, take that bar out of the way, that rod, you can't get to the screws. And one of them is an adjuster screw, which adjusts the tension on the belt. Before we um, pull that out, we might just check the tension on the belt. Just apply some pressure on it. We really need a gauge here. I push it very hard. Goes in about an eighth of an inch on that mark there. Let's see if I can go in tight there. I push that. There's the side. It's pushing halfway, which is there. That's how tight that is. Moving that that way. Right at the point there. The maximum travel there would be about four millimeters, four to five millimeters. Four millimeters, that's about as tight as it goes. So now we remove this um, shaft along here. Turn it around so we can see it. 